Armory's biggest feature for newcomers to the engine is the node system. Nodes inside of Arm 3D are super powerful because they require no knowledge really of any sort of coding. You don't need to code in the standard way of doing it. You can instead just plug in nodes to each other and that creates your scripts automatically. However, there's a bit of a downside on that as well. You see text can be compressed. However, visual scripting is just blocks and blocks pile up and then blocks become big walls of big complex nets. And it's really hard to really understand what's going on after a while when you have so many logic nodes. And that's been a problem with Arbor 3D for quite a while. Since March, this has no longer been a big problem. You see, we have the implementation of a brand new feature in Arbor 3D, the call node groups. Basically, you have the ability now to group together all these different nodes. For example, this is a first person shooter tutorial that I showed with all the different nodes that you need to make it work. This isn't now. A single node with access to the most important features. This is a big deal. You see, it's much easier to understand. It's cleaned up all the UI. It's got no unnecessary things. Only access to the most important information and everything else is hidden. So how does it work? Essentially, let's go to the end panel in the editor go down to the armory section and now we have the ability to create a core group and here we have a couple options we can press the finder icon to look for pre-existing node groups that we've already created or we can create a new one so let's do that and as soon as we press that we can see we have two nodes that appear the input and the output nodes and we also have a little thing up here that shows you that our previous node group that we originally created is now become a sub module of that node group. So we've basically we've gone down a layer and here in this layer, we can create all our mechanics. We can create whatever we want to do. And when we press this button up here, this little return icon, we return back to our main node group. And here we have access to all the different values that we plugged into the input and to the output. Obviously, the input is everything that's going to be on this side, and the output is everything on this side. So, this is essentially everything there is to it. Now, there are different shortcuts already assigned uh, now in this new April release, so we can uh, really control this very rapidly. But what's really important about this is the fact that this isn't uh, specific to the node tree. You see, the core node group is more like an interface to uh, the different node trees underneath. So, what you can do essentially is you can have a single uh, mechanic set up in a call group and use that throughout the entire project and this is a huge deal for example remember that color grading video i made not too long ago i talked about fade to black well if you we do the same thing now inside a call group we can plug in the input to the duration and now when we return we have the uh, fade to black mechanic the feature with access to the duration so we can control it for different situations. So it's the same code that you can modify and use for different situations. And you can use it throughout the entire project. You, do, you never need to recreate this feature. It's basically a custom node that you can make for any situation, any mechanic, any event that you might need. When it comes to learning on 3D, this is a huge and very important feature that you should master as soon as you can. Because node groups inside of ARM3D are completely revolutionized in how and what you can do in ARM3D. For example, you can have node groups inside of node groups. And when you return back to the base, you have all these different mechanics built inside a single node. That is so much power. That means that now you can share these projects, these blend files, and give it to anybody who has never touched ARM3D before. And they'll open it up and they'll have a very complex mechanic in a single node with access to only the most important features. Now, if we go back to creation of these node groups, we can go ahead and press edit. And now we can see we have uh, the input and the output nodes. And these nodes essentially give you uh, the ability to plug into any value that you want access to on the outside. So what we can do is select the node, press new, and it's going to create a new blank socket. So you can plug in many different inputs and many different outputs. And we can also move them up and down by going to the end panel. And in here we have access to these little controls that allow you to control the inputs and the outputs of the sockets. So you can modify them and change the names as well. This node grouping system is going to be very important to understand because a lot of people are going to be using it to make some insane stuff. We're now going to be able to make different node group packs that we're going to be able to distribute to anyone throughout the internet. And you can easily just import this pack and have this really complex mechanic set up into a single node that you can use anywhere throughout your project. This is a huge game changer for Arm 3D and I hope you're excited as I am today because this is wild. And I'll see you in the next one.